Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KidBadger.com here with one of my childhood friends, Seth. Hey everybody. And if you remember, we did a video a while back where we talked about how to, he basically shared his expertise with how to start an IV. Him coming from a place where he does it all the time in the emergency room as a nurse. So today, we're gonna get a little deeper with him as far as the why and when and things along those lines. Hey everybody, we're doing a follow-up video on IVs. In the last video, we showed a how-to on how to start an IV. And in this one, we're going on a little more depth on why you would start an IV and the, just the clinical indications for it. But I do want to touch on the fact this does not take the place of any formal medical training. It's just kind of a fun informational video for people that might have a need for this in the future. In the last video, <laughs> we jumped straight into how, mm -hmm. which was really cool because it's just straight up skill. Like this is how you do it. This is the angle, blah, blah, blah. But obviously a little bit of knowledge can be super dangerous. So taking a step back, why would we potentially want to start an IV? Well, I think for this audience, like the most important one would be for hypovolemia. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know what that is. So <laughs> hypovolemia is just when, some, for example, someone is losing so much, vo such a large volume of blood that your heart doesn't have anything to circulate through the body. So you need to replace that with something. In the hospital, we would give blood products um, to replace that. Uh, but in the field, you don't have blood products. So we would use like saline, some sort of crystalloid um, solution. Okay. What would be some of the indicators as far as someone is moving into the state? Um, without any medical equipment, you would see um, they might become pale, diaphoretic, meaning they're just sweating. Um, you're going to feel their heart rate. Their heart rate's going to speed up, so they're going to be tachycardic. Anything like over 100 um, at rest, like if they're just running and it's over 100, then that's to yeah. be expected. Um, but if you have a blood pressure cuff, you're going to see a systolic of less than 90 and that's the top number. Gotcha. So when you say without medical equipment, are you referring to a blood pressure cuff? Because Correct. I don't usually have yeah, one yeah. in my pocket. Like, not everybody yeah. carries them in their truck. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so to paint a picture or give an example of a scenario, like say you're in a remote training area doing moving drills and you're unfortunate enough to clip one of your buddies in the arm or the back or whatever. Um, at first, you're just going to control the bleeding and monitor them. But if you have an extended transport time between them and medical care, um, and they're starting to have these these signs, they might be starting to get confused. This means that shock is setting in, and um, they do need a little bit of help. You might want to consider starting an IV because as they lose more blood, the veins and the vessels actually get smaller and smaller and smaller, like a hose with water going through it. Like All right. When it's going through full, and then it gets smaller. So time sensitive in that if you don't get on top of it like you won't necessarily miss the window but you're going to make it exponentially more difficult down the road to start that thing correct all right Thirty thousand foot view like backing up looking at ivs in general what we're talking about basically is rehydrating the body right so like what are i guess what are other uses for starting the iv beyond perfect scenario like i'm going to go to the hospital or to the er because xyz like Again, talking remote areas. Well, essentially it's fluid replacement, which in turn rehydrates the body. Uh, but other than like blood loss, like severe blood loss, mm -hmm. um, dehydration, um, severe dehydration, um, either from um, heat exposure or- Like hyperthermia? Yeah, from okay. just being too hot. Um, or from, cold or flu-like symptoms, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, that's persistent for- All know, at the tour. same time. All at the same time. <laughs> Sometimes you don't know which end is gonna come out of. Yeah, no, to that end, like natural disasters, I mean, you'll have like a hurricane come through or whatever it may be, like these little island nations, and then a bunch of people died because of floodwaters. And then a lot of people died from vomiting and diarrhea. Cause like they couldn't get on top of it. just getting sick mm -hmm. because of contaminated water but uh so obviously diarrhea vomiting pretty easy indicators but uh as far as hyperthermia when someone's like cresting that and starting to go downhill like what are things you're looking for there well i mean they're obviously gonna stop sweating um and they're going to possibly be confused. 
Um, and before giving saline, you're actually going to want to just cool the person as quickly as possible. Like mechanical cooling as far as water? just Water, ice packs, whatever you can in the groin. All right. Um, and just getting them out of the heat, if, if at all possible. Um, but starting IV and giving fluids is definitely going to help. In that first video we did, like we dove straight in, like down and dirty, this is how you do it. X, Y, Z. Follow these steps. What are kind of some of the finer points or just things to really emphasize as far as going through that process? So most importantly is um, reducing the risk of infection because you can straight up kill someone trying to help them by starting that IV. You know, I know we have antibiotics that can fight just about anything, but when you start an IV in an unclean site, um, you're bypassing all the, the body's natural defenses. So you have to be really careful to try and maintain sterility and clean the area so that when you puncture that skin, you're not pushing bacteria gotcha. straight into their, their okay. bloodstream. So you wanna do good hand hygiene and you wanna clean the area really well, especially if you're just training with your buddies, like just practicing on each other. Um, you just wanna be extra careful just to clean the site incredibly well, get your hands clean and use proper hand protection. All right. Again, just review a couple of the reasons why we would initiate an IV is just fluid replacement, either from blood loss, hypovolemia, um, or from nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or even just heat exposure. Um, those are just this is just something that's going to help in all of those situations. Um, I don't want to like make you think like you're going to be a ninja and like start an IV and cure your buddy. Like it's really just something that can either... It's a stopgap, right? It's a stopgap. It's either going to buy you time or like in the sense of dehydration, it's going to make that person feel a hundred times better. Yeah. You know, some of you guys like to party a little too much. Maybe you could start an IV after a, after your uh, dirty you, 30 birthday. When you wake up at the crack of noon. Uh -huh. um, but really, um, just remember to uh, maintain sterility and that hand hygiene. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, and again, this uh, doesn't take the place of any formal medical training, but it is something to keep in your toolbox. Well, again, man, thanks for thanks for sharing your knowledge, man. I really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadgers.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.